Yeah, well, so we just released the, the fact that we hit another record low for the maximum sea ice extent this winter. And this follows on the last two years, which were also a record low um, maximum sea ice extents, which is a bit very, it's very unusual actually. We've never seen three winters in a row where we've had really low winter ice conditions. And we've never seen three winters in a row with very warm Arctic temperatures. And this, uh, this winter is probably even warmer than it was last year, which set new records for the amount of warmth that we saw in the wintertime in the Arctic. And the problem with that is, is that if you have really warm um, winters in the Arctic, you're not going to grow very thick ice. And it looks like from estimates that we can see right now from Cryosat and also from a modeling work that people have been doing that we are sort of at our lowest volume or thinnest ice that we've seen for this time of year. And that's not good news going into the melt season because we can melt one and a half to two meters of thick ice every summer. And that looks like the average of the thickness of the ice right now in the Arctic Basin. Yes, yeah, so we've been seeing over recent decades a dramatic decline in, in the Arctic sea ice and rapid warming and the, the conversation is now moving to what, what could the consequences of that be for places much further afield like for, for, for the UK, for North America and that's a really active area of science and I think there's a scientific consensus now building that certainly what happens in the Arctic does not stay in the Arctic, there will be far-flung effects. But really the kind of the debate at the moment is how large this effect is and, and the specific processes involved. But we're pretty confident that there's this the Arctic change is gonna is gonna impact us all, but it's not quite sure exactly how. So there's been a lot of talk about whether we may experience more frequent or more intense cold winters, which seems counterintuitive in, in, a, in, a, in a warming world. But there's some um, hypotheses out there that say that the, the Arctic warming may change wind patterns and may increase the frequency of cold winds coming to the UK. Um, but there's still a, it's still very much a, a open for debate because there are other, other competing factors that would lead to warming and it's a balance of multiple factors that then give you the eventual what you see in reality. Well, as you say, there's a large amount of variability year to year in terms of the Antarctic sea ice. And there's also different things happening in different parts of the Antarctic with different trends in, in the Ross Sea and the Amundsen Sea and then the Bellingshausen Sea. Um, so it's quite a complex picture and I think it would be premature to draw any strong conclusions from just one year. As you say, we've seen minimum levels this year. Um, but if we go back just a couple of years to 2014, we saw maximum in terms of our um, satellite record. So there is a lot of variability and I think it would be premature to, to draw any strong conclusions from one year. But there is a lot of research going on to try and understand what the key mechanisms are that are driving changes in sea ice in the Antarctic. And it's a quite complex process between interactions between the atmosphere, the oceans and the ice acting together on different timescales. So I think that you know, we are going to start to see um, developments in our understanding. Yeah, well certainly in the long term, all the climate models indicate a decrease in um, sea ice over the long term in the Antarctic. But the caveat on that is that you know, that's with quite low confidence because of our weaknesses in our ability to model the Antarctic sea ice.